Can you really trust what you see on social media? This was posted as a picture from the Gaza Strip. But is it really? If you thought it's a deep fake, you'd be right. The internet is full of them. Like this one of Vladimir Putin saying Russia will be attacked. So how can you recognise deep fakes for what they are? That's our topic on this episode of Shift. Donald Trump in a loving embrace with COVID expert Anthony Fauci? Really? Even if you didn't buy that one, AI-produced deepfakes like it are becoming increasingly convincing. This particular image was used by Florida Governor Ron DeSantis in June 2023 in an attempt to smear his rival candidate. With the US presidential election fast approaching, social media is rife with disinformation. And people aren't holding back from using deepfakes in political campaigns, whether it's to defame opponents or to spread fake news. It's still fairly easy to spot fake videos generated by AI, but it's much harder when it comes to audio. In India, a member of the ruling BJP party released audio recordings of opposition politician Palandivil Tiaga Rajan. In one clip, Tiaga Rajan appears to say that his party members are corrupt. But an examination by independent AI experts found the audio was likely doctored. In Slovakia, a dubious audio clip was circulated on Facebook just before the national elections in September 2023. Leader of the opposition progressive Slovakia party, Mikhail Chmetska, seems to be talking about plans to rig the election. But AFP's fact-checking department said the clip showed signs of manipulation. And in the UK, where Labour Party leader Sir Keir Starmer is leading in the polls, a deep fake was posted on X in which he's heard swearing repeatedly at a staffer. Just shut your mouth. That audio was also exposed as a fake. Yet the damage caused by deepfakes can be irreversible, especially in the run-up to elections. Right now, if you don't have a powerful laptop, it still takes ages to make a deepfake, but even in the last few years, it's gotten much faster. And with the AI race, it's only a question of time before the tech becomes readily accessible to anyone. But what does it take to produce a good deepfake? And how can you spot one? To find out, we went to Munich. Nicolas Müller warns that deepfakes are getting increasingly easy to create. He's a cybersecurity expert in Munich and has been looking into different models. Process, so you would look up a politician, for example, which you want to clone, um, and then you find a video where he is giving a speech. Maybe this video is 30 minutes long, but every second of the video has 20 to 30 frames. So just by taking this single um, video, you maybe have 10,000 images of the politician. And then you can feed this into the autoencoder, which learns to disentangle the image, and then you, you can manipulate it. An autoencoder is a type of neural network used for making deepfakes. In essence, it works a lot like a good pizza chef. They first learn the ingredients of every pizza on the menu and what it should taste and look like. And then, before long, they can combine those ingredients differently to make entirely new pizzas. The outcomes of deepfake tools that use such AI can be incredibly realistic, as demonstrated here. I am not Morgan Freeman, and what you see is not real. So the tools are much more ready in a way. They are much easier to use. Um, the data that we have in order to train these deepfake generating models has matured a lot. Compute has become much more affordable. Um, and also people have just looked at the technology and seen its value and invested in it heavily. So we just have more compute at our fingertips now than a few years back. Müller helped design a tool that can identify some deepfakes. It works best when the voice in a clip is generated with AI. When someone creates a video with a good human voice actor, for example, the fakes are harder to detect. And so are the newest fakes. OK, so these deepfake detection models struggle whenever the um, fakes are newer than the models themselves. So we have to continuously update them. Um, and also, it's just very hard to get access to all the fakes and all the good audio out there. While these deepfakes are harder to spot, they are also harder to create. Even so, as deepfake tools get more sophisticated and accessible, the people rooting them out will have to adapt too. 
Fake detectors are now available for home use as well, with apps such as Sensity AI or Deepware AI. Or there's Intel's real-time deepfake detector, which analyzes blood flow under the skin via pixel changes to determine if a video of a person is real. But there are also ways to expose deepfakes using the good old naked eye. You can look for deformed facial features and strangely shaped limbs, and keep an eye out for unnatural transitions in the images. Make sure you always check the source and context of every post and video, and as always, don't immediately believe everything you see. This also applies to AI chatbots like ChatGPT. They too have been known to give out false information. Why do chatbots lie? That's what Clara Helming and her team are trying to find out. They quizzed Microsoft's chatbot Bing about various German politicians and found that sometimes it gave incorrect answers, even when the right information was in its cited sources. We don't really understand the connection to the links it provides because the links are kind of the links that you would pro probably get from the regular Bing or Google search engine. So how is it possible that the bot answers incorrectly when its source information is accurate? For one thing, chatbots aren't trained to tell the truth. They're trained to give us the most likely next word in a sentence. So it, it's actually a structural problem, and that's where we are a bit skeptic that this will change so that chatbots will actually like give us correct and truthful answers in the future. After reporting the mistakes to Microsoft, the company made corrections to the bots' responses. But that doesn't take care of the bigger, looming danger. If now search engines, which are the places where we go to, to find uh, new and correct information, if they start using these chatbots that actually don't give us the right information, then we actually have a problem for democracy. Um, because reliable information, knowing what is actually happening, is one of the prerequisites for democracy. Companies that make AI chatbots are setting up safety measures. Nevertheless, Clara Helming advises users to be careful, especially when they're about to vote. It's very important to have like a bit of media literacy, especially because the big tech companies that produce these um, chatbots, they um, don't like they don't give enough warning about the dangers that come with using it. Some forecasts predict that over 90% of new content on the web could be created with AI by 2026. And while chatbots can deliver elaborate and complex answers, there's no guarantee they're right. Ultimately, how much we trust AI is up to us. According to experts, an especially high number of AI fakes and also just regular disinformation, like for example on the Israel-Gaza war, end up on X. One big reason for that is bots, another is Elon Musk. Bots are a known problem on social media. They're used to create reach and push political agendas and can be automated or semi-automated. You can sometimes spot them by their handles, which are often randomly generated. Bots can perform at a scale humans can't, posting, liking, sharing and commenting minute by minute. When one of their posts is seen as popular by the AI of the social media platform, it gets shared even further, even when that post contains misinformation or is a deepfake, because so far, social media hasn't mastered weeding these out. When Elon Musk bought Twitter and turned it into X, he also disbanded the election integrity team, which had been keeping an eye on political disinformation and deepfakes on Twitter. Musk made his position clear in a tweet. According to Musk, the integrity team were inhibiting the free exchange of opinions ahead of US elections. His idea is that users should track down and report fake news or deepfakes themselves with so-called community notes. But whether that can work in practice is debatable. Google and Meta are taking a different approach. On those platforms, anyone running political ads must first disclose whether they used AI tools. Meta also works with independent fact checkers, while TikTok's solution is to simply ban all political advertising. In the EU, tech giants like Meta or X can now face severe penalties if they don't do enough to combat disinformation and deepfakes. And more actions are also being taken on the industry level. Many media companies, including DW, now have their own fact-checking teams that debunk disinformation. One example is in Kenya, with a new initiative called Fumbua, which roughly means finding out or opening your eyes in Swahili. 
To help, they've enlisted a Kenyan influencer. Esther Kazungu makes TikToks about politics in Kenya. Sandalizing. I have also read some, some literature. Seek for evidence. And when I see things uh, happening, uh, scandals and whatnot, I usually just want to talk about it. She currently has more than 200,000 followers. I just love knowing and hearing that I'm not alone in this. Like, I, I'm not in this circus thinking, bruh, like, are you guys actually seeing what's happening? Wanjira Nungui is a researcher at Fumbua, a collective that tracks false information online. She says that TikTok has hacked virality. It's not that misinformation is new. It's just bigger because of the amplification power of social media, how platforms behave, what, what they allow, you know, the algorithms and how that works. That's why Fumbua teamed up with Esther ahead of the 2022 presidential race to create TikTok's warning against falling for disinformation. Be very keen when it comes to very, very short video because it means then that the information has been contained in that very short video. And so the possibility of it being a fake video is very high. And, and then now with the AI and people just being able to create and to edit things, it's become very easy for you to not just amplify, but also, you know, edit videos, edit audio, edit pictures, and then spread them. Fumbua helped Esther fact check and produce content that warned against sharing unverified videos. I also found myself needing a platform like Fumbua because it's so easy to believe anything that's posted on the on the internet. So it came at a very at a very needed time where information, especially during elections, information is really just flying around. Kenya's next general election is in 2027. Until then, Esther and collectives like Fumbua will continue their mission to end misinformation. And then let's discuss it. So how good are you at spotting deepfakes and disinformation? Put your skills to the test with MIT's quiz at the address below. That's it from us today. Have a good one and see you next time. <laughs>